Hello, friends. It's Chop. That should have been the climax of that movie. You know what I think is, comes uh, next? I don't, I don't think there's anything and John stopping D- this. There's nothing going to pull us back. We're going next. Jinkos, big t-shirts, big graphic t-shirts with uh, hip-hop Looney Tunes or like <laughs> oh, uh, sexually charged back. company names like Big Johnson's. <laughs> that kind of thing. No Go fear. Go ahead naked. Go ahead naked. That's where we're going. Yeah, I would love to see. I would love to see like a uh, sort of waifish young woman, a, a, a new school grad wearing a gangsta Tweety Bird jacket. <laughs> uh, uh, has anyone seen Blade Trinity? Oh yeah, I, no. yeah. So, uh, I've that, seen Blade Trinity. Jessica Biel, Ryan Reynolds bring right. a little heat. I think it came out in two thousand four, and in it, Jessica Biel's is wearing that like. Uh, that like evanescence ass like a uh, leader from wwf thing with like the skin tight long sleeve shirt and then the low rise jeans and i saw i watched at least i recently saw, was, saw it on tv uh, and i was like oh shit they're dressing like that again the ladies are dressing this way it's early it's oh it's, yeah it's early bush you know what's going to be huge and this is a huge recommendation for the many late bloomers in our audience you know if you're 37 there's going to be an article about you having casual. Here's one way. Here, here's one way to fast track that. All right. Get a t-shirt. Get a t-shirt that Jesse Pinkman may wear. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get a, yeah. Get like a big scary skull or like um, it should just have like two words on it perhaps instead in like sort of a um, if you remember the first cherry Coke font like that. Yeah. And it should say it should say something like um, no entries a band, a, you know, a condemned biohazard. And then under that, uh, wear a nice waffle tee, long sleeve waffle tee. A waffle a good tee, style. yes. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, T-shirt over the long sleeve shirt, that was the official uniform of 27-year-olds dating 17-year-olds. Just we're all, we're, all, we're all becoming pink, like sort of season one, season two, Jesse Pinkman. That's uh, the thing is like, as... As history like reverses itself and we're going backwards in time, will we go back beyond the date of September 11th, or will history just like even going backward just hit like a sort of Terminator at 9/11? Like, will we will we recede further into the 90s, or will we just hit the wall of the early 2000s and then begin recycling shit again? Yeah, everyone's kind of been behaving like final three seasons, Jesse Pinkman, where it's like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sad. My the love of my life uh, died of heroin overdose. Oh, I'm sad. My best friend poisoned my stepson. Oh, boohoo, poor me. I was a slave. Um, whereas you need to be season one and two, Jesse, when he's wearing the cool shirts. I don't think we're going to be able to go much later, much uh, farther back than the nineties because nineties is the decade where people basically stopped giving a shit. Like the nineties is when yeah. they start being like, I don't actually care how I look going outside. I would just like to be comfortable. And the eighties the was the last vestige of uh, like fashion as a self-conscious like part of someone's, uh, you know, uh, uh, identity. Uh, like when you do, when you look at those eighties fashions, it's like, damn, people were putting the work in. And now the entire point is to find a creative way to put zero work in. So I think we can only stick between that band. I don't think we can ever get to the point where people are, you know, like looking like a flock of seagulls videos. It's, it's just too time consuming. Everybody's, everybody's too tired. Everyone's too depressed. Yeah. I saw a, uh, there's a movie from 1999, like the last year of doing that, that I saw with Jason Biggs. You know, one of those movies where it's like, um, oh, we're, will a lower middle class guy succeed in, uh, you know, getting a girlfriend? Uh, Saving Solomon? And, no, it was one before that. It was, it was, um, loser. I what it was. Is it the Woody Allen? It was movie? loser. Yeah, it was loser. Okay. It was loser. loser yeah. And that was and his big Greg follow up to American Pie. Yeah. Greg Kinnear plays like an evil professor who's dating a student in it. And to like show that he's bad, there's a big scene of him buying a turtleneck. <laughs> it's like, look it how much this fucking... garment. It really is, but it is like that's like the implication that he cares about fashion too much. You know, uh, I think we've t- talked about this on the show, but before, but still has never sunk in for me that uh, Jason Biggs not Jewish, Italian. It's crazy. I mean, I know if he, if he was going to be anything else, it would have had to have been that because they have that pact, the Italian Jewish pact. They could play each other in movies, which is why one of the yeah. great rogues in film history was Sean Penn in Carlito's way. It's like careful Irish. 
<laughs> yeah, I yeah. love Kleinman though. That, that's my favorite Sean Penn performance. No, he's, he's half Jewish. He shows that they sh- it shouldn't just be limited, but generally it is. No. He's half Jewish. He gets in. Um, oh, okay, never mind. I, yeah, no, I would like to be. Um, I'd like to be played by uh, Bobby Cannavale's son in the movie about our show. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh Where's this God, Bobby Cannavale? Honor. Yeah, what about uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean he's a very handsome man. Um, if we're going right, well, graphic. Uh, well, guys, this is actually a perfect segue to uh, my next topic for this show. Uh, gentlemen, rarely is the question asked, is our Hasidic Jewish kids learning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Uh, talk about a talk about a can of worms they opened up. <laughs> Did you, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen this. Okay, this is going to start as a like a sort of a very New York City local story, but I think there are national implications that I want to get into. But there was a huge New York Times article that came out um, just yesterday that essentially um, does an audit of the private school system run by uh, New York City's Hasidic Jewish community, which is basically the size of Boston's entire public school system. It has something like fifty thousand kids, and uh, you know uh, gets receives. And this is and the article like actually was the first time anyone ever did like I think a forensic audit of just how much money they get from the state. But the private school system uh, that educates only Hasidic Jewish children in New York gets three hundred and seventy five million dollars a year from the state of New York to essentially not teach kids anything other than the Talmud and like ancient Aramaic. I mean, like, look, the, the here's the uh, like the, the sort of the nut graph from uh the, the piece here. It says the Hasidic Jewish community has long operated one of New York's largest private schools on its own terms, resisting any outside scrutiny on how st- its students are faring. But in 2019, the school, the Central United Talmudical a- a- Academy, agreed to give state standardized tests in reading and math to more than a thousand students. Every one of them failed. Students at nearly a dozen other schools run by the Hasidic community recorded similarly dismal outcomes that year, a pattern that under ordinary circumstances would signal an education system in crisis. But where other schools might be struggling because of underfunding or mismanagement, these schools are different. They are failing by design. And look, I mean, like the article just goes on to show that, like, I mean, like it interviews interviewed hundreds of people, including one of them, a 28 year old man who's left the Hasidic Jewish community who first learned to read English at 28 when someone gave him a Dr. Seuss book. I mean, they're showing like a, a really like, okay, look, the idea that there is any institution that is allowed to exist and call itself a school, we're like, there is no emphasis made. I mean, like, where kids are just not taught to read and write. Like, I think that's a disgrace. But like, to also be getting that much money from the state, from our public education system, to essentially keep children in a state of complete ignorance and completely isolated from the world they live in. And, you know, I saw, I mean, some defenses, haha, of the, this, this abominable, uh, quote unquote, education system by, you know, the usual suspects, the Heritage Foundation or whatever. And um, there's this one guy who said, like, you know, middle America agrees with us that schooling is primarily about creating community, not about, edu- not about status and money. And to that, I, I, I replied to him, I think education is about primarily about teaching kids to read and write. And he replied to me, this guy, Jason Burdick or whatever from the Heritage Foundation. He said, uh, they, they can read and write in three languages. And that I replied, is one is, way to put it. <laughs> I replied, is English?